Hi, this is a video to introduce Podman primarily and talk a little bit about its complementary open source project Builda. So as you may be aware, Cryo effectively replaces Docker's runtime engine in OpenShift 4. But since we still have to actually be able to build containers, using Builda plus Podman can give us containers without any type of a heavyweight Docker daemon being involved anymore. So Builda's role is to let us uh, basically have a Kubernetes cluster without a Docker daemon either for runtime or builds. And Podman gives us all of the same Docker commands that uh, we're used to running without having to depend on its daemon uh, running you know, anywhere on a laptop or in the Kubernetes cluster itself, for instance, if we have to do troubleshooting, things like that. Uh, how, how effective is Podman at replacing Docker? Well, the maintainers uh, recommend that you do an alias of the Docker command to actually just point at Podman. And so we'll be taking a look here uh, in, at just a live demo. Very simple example here, just to work with Podman uh, in the first place in this video on a local system. And then in a future video, we'll actually be looking at what that uh, does for us in an OpenShift context. So for this video though, um, the installation of Podman is relatively straightforward. If you're on a rel-based system or Mac OS, something like that, just use your favorite package manager and off you go. Um, here we'll actually start, uh, we'll take the maintainer's recommendation in this video and we'll actually do the alias of uh, Docker and Podman. We actually don't uh, run um, Docker on the system at all. Uh, we are simply running Podman. And so from here, we're going to take a super primitive Git repo and we're going to clone to that. We're actually going to give it a more specific name than the one that we're starting with and we'll cd into that directory now. And so our, we're running our first quote unquote Docker command, which is actually a Podman command behind it, right? So which Docker it shows us once again that it's an alias for us. And now we're running the Docker build command that you're probably very familiar with. I'll actually take it just a quick look at the Docker file itself, just to show you uh, what that looks like, uh, about as basic as it gets for something like Node. And so once again, we'll actually run the, uh, sorry, I didn't actually run the command, so it didn't, didn't give it to me. That was part of my history. So we'll go ahead and start this uh, Docker build and we'll pause the video now and we'll come back when it's finished and we'll actually step through the steps. And we're back. So we've gone ahead and built uh, this image. And so we can see that it looks like everything worked out okay there as far as especially the NPM install, which is what uh, took most of the time for us in this example. And so now we can actually run uh, Docker images. Once again, all these commands basically should work for us. And from here, we'll go ahead and launch this system next. And we're actually creating uh, just a variable here so that we can keep accessing the system pretty generically. We're trying to be as generic as possible. We'll include the basic code that we run and some of the video details uh, to follow in a blog post. But basically from here, we're actually doing another uh, Docker command, this time to run the, the system and actually build a container from that image. So that worked pretty fast. And so from here, we should also be able to look at the Docker logs and see a console message that's been produced uh, by the, the Node.js code actually to tell us where we could find that system. So in this case, it's a once again, very basic. Um, and so now we'll go ahead and enter this container from uh, just a bash perspective. And we can just see the files that are on the uh, file system, just to give ourselves a little bit of a sanity check on that. And then from here, what we can do is actually uh, also take a look at the container that's running itself. So that's nice. And then, uh, since we are, as we've talked about in the past, in a trust but verify business, we'll go ahead and curl that uh, system on the port that this was set up on. Again, the port was set up here. And we do see that it's sending us the index.html page for this example. So that uh, basically wraps up video one. And we'll be uh, talking through some more specifics about Podman itself and about a, more of an OpenShift type example in a couple of upcoming videos. So we'll hope to see you there.